Hi, and welcome to my guide of the updated version of While Gothic Sleeps from July 17th, 2024 and onward. Make sure that you go to the quest log and verify that you've completed all the quest requirements and that you meet all the skill requirements. Items needed. My inventory is currently very cluttered and that is because I have brought every single item that is needed and recommended and all the teleports for the whole quest. If you know that you have all these required, recommended and teleports in your bank, then you can skip this part of me going over every single item and immediately get the items for part 1. So, for every required item for the whole quest is a knife, one mind and every single elemental rune, which is air, water, earth and fire, approximately 40,000 GP, a lantern lens, a sapphire lantern from the Tears of the Catholics quest, an unpowered orb, three cosmic runes, 30 elemental runes, it doesn't matter which kind of element you're going to be using, and all four of your best elemental spells. I'm just going to be using all four of the wave spells. Next is the runes to cast four times NPC contact and being able to swap your spellbook to Lunars and back. I'm going to be using someone else's Alcult Altar. For the final boss, you will also need to bring all three combat styles. In that fight, I'm simply going to be using Full Void, so I can use a two-way switch. Bring as many switches as you like. For the recommendations, it's an anti-poison potion. Have some good supplies, such as Karambuan's Sharks or Prayer Potions. For the first boss, you will also need Telegraph runes, which are Law and Air. Alchemy runes, which are Nature and Fire. Weaken runes, which are Body, Water and Earth. And Snare runes, which are Nature, Water and Earth runes. Then for the final boss, having 3 or 4 Super Restore potions is also nice. Then also a Seed Dimmer, if you haven't completed the Barbarian Farming training yet. And one Stamina Potion should also be enough. For the teleports, I'm going to be bringing along one teleport to the Feldip Hills, one to Fight Arena, I'm going to be using the Watchtower teleport, one to any Spirit Tree, I'm going to be using the Gruan Exchange teleport, one teleport to Taverly, I'm going to be using a Redirection Scroll on a House Tablet, one to McGruber's Woods, I'm going to be using the Fairy Ring Code ALS, eight teleports to Falador Castle, the best teleport would be to use the Achievement Cape to Falador Castle directly, if you also don't have that, then just bring regular Feralador teleports. Then one teleport to the Warriors Guild, gonna be using the Games Necklace. Two teleports to Black Knight's Castle, which is next to the Lassar and Mind Altar teleport and the Edgefield Monastery. And finally, two teleports to Tears of Gothics, once again Games Necklace. And four teleports to go to any bank. I gonna be using uh, dual ring or winter dot teleports and that is it what i'm going to be using for the entire quest next is for part one items needed a knife and have at least 500 coins or the ring of Keros equipped for the recommended items an antidote a weapon to kill two archers that just use ranged with one special attack but you should be able to avoid all damage if not, be sure to bring some food and at least two empty inventory slots would also be nice. For the teleports for part one is one teleport to the Felder Pills, one teleport to Fight Arena, gonna be using the Watchtower, and one teleport to any bank to prepare for part two. Let's start this quest by talking to Ivy Sovista in Taverly. Select option 1 to start the quest and she will make us go upstairs. Let's do so. And there we'll find Theorisk. Let's talk to him. And after speaking to him, we will get ambushed by two assassins who followed us. First, use Protect from Missiles and defeat both archers. The archers do have one special attack. Which is if one of the two archers shouts now, once the green arrow has hit you, use protect from melee and then switch back to protect from ranged and continue with your fight.
Once the fighting is over, let's talk to Therisk for quite some time. And after speaking to him, we will need to get a broth and a dirty shirt. To do so, we'll first need to go to the fight arena. So, let's make our way to fight arena. And southwest of fight arena, there is a big bar. If you go north from there and enter the second building north, They'll find an NPC, the Laundra. Let's talk to him and select option 1 if you've brought 500 coins. Select option 2 to charm if you've brought the Ring of Keras. And he will give you the dirty clothes. After you have the dirty shirt, we'll need to make our way to the Fildip Hills. Do so. And then go to the Hunter Expert, who's located on the map next to the Fildip Hills teleport scroll. If you don't have these, then you can also use the fairing code AKS. Once you're here, let's talk to the Hunting Expert and select option 2 about Brawls. Or select option 3 if you have 99 Hunter about Brorf. And you will receive a Morph My Fungus. Next, exit west and you'll find a axe in a stump. If you lack inventory space, maybe drop two items temporarily, take the axe and then go west. Chop down any jungle tree on your way west and you'll find a pit next to a jungle tree. Set it up. And then use the Mortmire Fungus on the trap as bait, and a Brove will spawn. Now simply wait until the War Brove is trapped. Dismantle the collapsed trap and then make your way back to the Hunting Expert. And use the Unconscious Brove on him, and he will train it for you. And that is already it for part one out of five. Let's make our way to any bank to prepare for the next part. I'm gonna go to Ferris Enclave and quickly restore all of my stats via the free for all portal. For part two, what we may deposit is our knife, the axe, as well as the antidote our Feldip Hills teleport scrolls, and that's about it. I just need it. Still your bro, your dirty shirt, one mind, one air, water, earth, and fire rune, approximately 40,000 GP, and a lantern lens. For the recommended items, I will also be bringing a weapon and some food to defeat some Axemen. Now, these Axemen are quite tanky against darts and all melee styles. The Axemen are weakest against magic and bolts. Then, if you haven't completed the Barbarian Farming Training, then you'll also need to bring a Seed Dibber. Next, also bring away to swap spellbooks to Lunars. And we're gonna be casting NPC Contact four times, which requires four Astral, four Cosmic, and eight Air Runes. I'm going to be using someone else's Occult Altar. Then also a Stamina Potion. Have at least three empty inventory slots. And also make sure that you go to your equipment and see that your weight is one or above. For the teleports, I'm going to be bringing along one teleport to a Spirit Tree. I'm going to be using a Varrock Chronic Exchange Teleport. One teleport to Taverly, redirection of a House Tablet. 
One teleport to make Ruger's Wood. I'm going to be using the Faring Coat ALS. Five teleports to Falador Castle. One teleport to the Warrior's Guild. And uh, lastly, one teleport to any bank to prepare for part three. All right, once you are set up for part two, let's make our way to any spirit tree. And let's select option three to go to the battlefield of Khazard. Which is just south of West Ardoin. Next, go southwest. And south of the Trino village, known tracker number two, there should find a broken table. Go stand south of it, then right click on the broth and drop it. Next, use your dirty shirt on the broth. And then the broken table should get a search option. Search it to open it and then pick up your broth. You can store this guy in your POH if you want to. If you do not want to, then you can simply also release it. Do not drop your broth if you weigh 5 kilos or less. Else you will not be able to continue with this quest. Next, let's go downstairs. And open the door. Go west, then go north. And keep going north until you see some ominous stairs. Climb down. Once there, you will be in a small room with a old battered door. Click on the door and it will say some text. Further access prohibited. Now one of the letters in the word prohibited is a rune turned sideways. If it is an O, then it means mind rune. If it is the H, then it is an earth rune. If it is the E, then it could be the air or fire rune. And if it is a D, then it is a water rune. The kind of rune that you will need to use on the old batter door is random for everyone. If you placed the wrong rune in the door, they will receive up to 25 to 30 damage. Next, open the old batter door. The bro weighed 5 fucking kilos! Fuck. Okay, once you weigh 1 kilos or more, you are allowed access into the next room with a couple of floor wires. Run around the room until you find a floor wire that is thicker than the rest. Follow this one to a bookcase. Search that bookcase and then one of the floor wire in this room will also change thickness. Follow that new wire to the next bookcase, click to continue and do so five times. And then once again the same one and that should remove the electricity from the door. Not yet. Can I not calculate? This is six times now. Alright, once you've unlocked the door southwest, open it and then right click on the spiral staircase and search. Then read if you are able to dismantle the trap. If so, climb up and then next to you just north they'll find a curved desk. Search it. Then next to you you'll find a waste paper basket. Take it. Then a rummage into it to find the key. Four tiles west of you you'll find a single tiled bookcase. Use your ruby key on it to spawn a staircase. Next, climb up to the bedroom and then search the bed. Then open the bed, insert the key, say yes. Next, right click on the bed chest and search. To disable the trap, else you will get taken damage up to 20 from the wall over there. Then open the bed chest and then search to find notes number 2. Next, to be able to leave this room, by the way, we are currently teleblocked, go back downstairs and go south. On your minimap, you should find a door sign, search the or inspect the painting and then climb over the broken wall. 
there will find a pressure gauge. Check it, and this will read X tickets. And X is the amount of kilograms that you've started this puzzle room with. Next, click to continue and go to your equipment. See how much you currently weigh. Take the difference between your current kilos and what is currently reading at the pressure gauge from the pile of weights just next to you. It should just be 2 kilograms. Once you have your difference in weight, go back north and go to the stone statue. If you happen to weigh less now than what you've started this puzzle with, then do absolutely nothing. And just keep the weights in your inventory. If you weigh more, 2 kilograms for example, then use your weights on the stone statue next to the curved desk. Then exit by using the door east. And then make our way back to Taverly to talk to Theorist at the quest start. Let's go upstairs and talk to Theorist. And after speaking to Theorisk, we will need to make our way to McGruber's Woods, which is located between the Ranging Guild and Sears Village, at the entrance of the Guardian of Arbordale Hideout, and there we will need to fight two Axemen. So, make your way either to the Ranging Guild, Sears Village, or to the Faring Code ALS, and go to the entrance of the Armadale Guardian Hideout. Once you reach the entrance, the fight will commence. Simply use Protect from Ali and defeat all the X-Men. If you defeated both the X-Men before Idria defeated her mage, uh, you could help her if you want to. Or you could simply wait. After you've defeated all the X-Men, talk to Idria and we will need to make our way to Falador for the first time. After speaking to Idria, let's get ready to teleport to Falador. Castle. Felder Castle. In Felder Castle, go inside the Eastern Rooms and you'll find three NPCs. Let's talk to Idria and select option one. And she will teleport us to the Drainer Market. Between the Willows and Drainer Market, we'll find a stranger. We will need to use the Tele Orb that we have just received on that stranger. If this happened to fail, they will need to teleport out or run away, because a shady stranger will start attacking you. Simply run out of aggression zone and try again. Once you've planted the Tele Orb, make our way back to Falador Castle to say that the deed is done. By the way, on our way to Palador once again, you may destroy both the notes. 
Those are no longer needed. And this time we will need to talk to uh, Akrisai. Let's talk to him and select option 1 three times. After the cutscene is over. First cutscene, then select option 1 three times. The first time is to buy a Snapdragon for half the price of the GE value. If you don't want to spend that money, then you can also just grab a regular Snapdragon from your bank. The second one is to confirm. And the third one is for a free teleport to Port Serum. Once at Port Serum, let's go northwest to the most northwestern building, the magic shop of Betty. Let's talk to her and select option 3-1 to buy a pink die for 20 coins. After that, let's talk to her and select option 2 about an enriched snapdragon seed. Once she has placed it on the counter, make her way, just like in the Hand of the Sand quest, to the doorway on the dark tile inside, then use the pink die on your lantern lens to make it pink, and then use that on the counter to make it enriched. Next, take from the counter and then make her way back to Falador Castle. Next, we will need to plant this enriched seed. To do so, we are going to be going up the ladder in the western, on the western side of this castle. Open the door and climb up the stairs just like in the Black Knight's Fortress quest to Ceramic Vase. And from there, go up once more and I use the seed on the herb patch. Next, make our way back to Akrisai or Idria. Make our way back to Idria. You can do so by using an achievement cave teleport back to the courtyard, or you could use the stairs. Right, let's, once you're back, let's talk to Idria. And she will give us a new task to talk to three Slayer Masters and Sirius. Once she has given us that task, don't select any option and walk away. Then, let's talk to those four NPCs. I am going to be using NPC Contact and I'm going to be swapping my spellbook using someone else's BOH. So therefore, I will need to go to 3.30. Fuck, it's full. Yes, made it in, nice. Once you have your spellbook swapped to Lunars, let's cast NPC Contact and talk to Turiel in the top right. Select option 2. After speaking to him, once again, NPC Contact and select Matcha. Option 2. After speaking to Matcha, NPC contact and select Durdel between Steve and Crystalia. Once again, option 2. And then lastly, let's do NPC contact for the final time at the bottom. Let's select Sirius, the second one from the bottom. And here we don't need to select anything. Next, make sure that you're back on the standard spellbook. Once you are, let's make our way back to Falador Castle. Let's go back to our enriched Snapdragon Seed at the top of the Western Tower. And harvest it. We do not need a spade to harvest this enriched herb.
once we have the enriched herb gathered from the top we only need to make our way back to idria so use your achievement cave teleport or use the stairs And we will get a truth serum. Once we have this, let's use the snapdragon on truth serum to make it super. Then go to the southeastern corner and search the drawers. Maybe first open and then search for some papyrus and charcoal. Then enter the cell gate or open the cell gate and use the super truth serum on the shady stranger. And he will give us even a suspect sketch. Once the conversation is over, open the cell gate and talk to any of the NPCs. Once this conversation is over, we will need to recruit some more NPCs. All of them are located at the Warriors Guild. So let's make our way to the Warriors Guild. Use your attack cape or games necklace. The first one is at the entrance door. Let's talk to Gobble. Select option 2 about Lucian. The second one is the first NPC that is inside the Warriors Guild. The guy with the fancy green hat and a white feather. Let's talk to him. Select option 2. And finally, for the final NPC, we will need to go upstairs. We need to talk to Sloane, the guy with the strength cape. So, let's go upstairs. And let's go to Sloane, who's located just a bit up north from the armory. Once again, select option 2. And after this conversation is over, we will need a bronze medium helm and an iron chain body. Luckily, if you just go a little bit south of Sloan after opening the heavy door again and go to the armory, trade Anton, and you can easily buy a bronze medium helm and an iron chain body for 280 coins. Next, let's make our way back to Palador Castle, and this time we will need to talk to Akrisai again, and this will trigger a cutscene. Ah, Krisa, hey, where are you? Once this conversation is over, it is the end of part two out of uh, six, I think. Next, we will need to unlock the first boss room. Therefore, let's first go to the bank after the cutscene is over. Right, let's make our way to any bank and prepare for part 3, unlocking the first boss room in the Black Knight's basement. In the Black Knight's castle's basement. Here at the bank, you may deposit your elemental runes that you haven't used on the door, the mind, air, water, earth and fire, as well as your seed dibber. Also, you may destroy Novarius notes as well as the rose tinted lens. For part three, what you will need is your bronze medium helm, iron chain body, an unpowered orb, at least three cosmic runes, and 30 of any elemental rune to be able to cast 
charge orb spell. Make sure that you're on the standard spellbook to be able to cast this spell. Then also bring two different combat styles. The best one is to use magic. The second one is to bring a crush weapon. And the third one is to bring bolts. I think I'm going to be using magic and ranged bolts since I don't really have a crush weapon at the moment. For the recommended items is one standard potion and prayer potion will be enough as well as about eight empty inventory slots and some food. Then what I also recommend is to bring some tank gear because we're going to be running in multi. We're going to be using protect from magic to protect against the majors and bring some good defensive gear because we're going to be needing to tank the archers and the meleers. For the teleport, to teleport to the Black Knight's castle. Closest would be the Mind Altar, Lothar Teleport, or the Monastery Teleport on the Combat Bracelet. About three more teleports to Felder Castle, and one more teleport to go to any bank to prepare for the first boss fight out of two of this quest. Right, let's unlock the first boss room. Let's teleport to the Black Knight's castle. And let's enter by equipping the Iron Chain Body and the Bronze Medium Helm. Just like in a Black Knight's Fortress quest, let's open the sturdy door, go north and open the wall. Or search the wall, push the wall. Then go down, just like in the King's Ransom quest. And on the eastern side, there will find an odd tile. Use any of the orb spells on it to open the door. Climb down. And next, it is a mini version of the Water Birth Dungeon. Make sure that you equip your tank here and start with using Protect from Range. North, go to the bridge and jump across by clicking around the edges until you see something red. Then use Protect from Melee and go north. At the crossroad, go east and use Protect from Magic. Then go north at the wall, click on it to climb up that wall and keep using Protect from Magic. Go north. And next, keep going north, drink Stamina Potion, don't forget that. And go into the Western Cavern. Keep going west, northwest, tanking all the rangers and the meleers. Keep going north. Following these tunnels. And first, open the western door. This will take us back and unlock the shortcut to the boss. Next, go through the solid door once again. To make our way back to the main, not really boss room. First, open the northern door. And here, we will need to fight some elite black knights. Come at 138. Use Protect from Melee. And start attacking. We will need to defeat three of them to obtain the three pieces of their uniform. If you're using magic and ranged, make sure that you unequip your melee tank gear first. And defeat three elite black knights. That is number one down for some plate legs and oh prayer potion. Easy game. 
Number two. Come here, bitch. Is that it already? I only needed to kill two. Nice. Once we have the full armor set, equip it and go east. Run out of their short aggro range. Then go back into the western room and let's go search some tables for some more stuff. First, let's drop the medium helm as well as the iron chain body and go north at the northern wall. There we'll find a key rack, I think. Yes, take the key, then go south. Search the table for a restore potion and a lobster. Do not consume these. Then go south and search the southern table for another tally orb. And then just a little bit further south, open the wardrobe, then search and take three dark squall robe pieces. Once we have all of these items, let's go back west, go back the way we came and then go east. On our way there, equip the Dark Squall ropes, keep going east and open the gate. Then open the gate right east, they'll find Silith. Let's use a Restore Potion on him. Then right click and use the Lobster on him. And since we have equipped the ropes and not the armor, Silith is already in the Elite Black Armor. Select option 1. Then open the gate. Go back west and go back to the room that we just came from. Open the solid door and then go straight east like three tiles. Next to the war rope there is a map board. Stand in front of it, talk to Silif, and he should start looking at it. And also, he will give you a tele orb that you will need to hide inside of the clothes of the first boss. Off to be of this, let's teleport to any bank to prepare for the first boss fight. Once again, I'm quickly going to Ferrex Enclave to restore my stats. At the bank, let's just deposit everything from our inventory and the equipment. What we will need is the Dark Squall rope set, both the Tele Orbs, the strange one and the regular one. Also, do not bring any ranged or melee, as well, do not bring any powered stuff such as the Warp Scepter, Trident of the Seas, or the Tumaker Shadow. Also, blood spells seems to have hotfix to not work anymore. So, the recommendation is to bring your best elemental spells. I'm simply going to be using all the four elemental wave spells. Do not take any damage from the four specials of the boss. We will need to bring the following runes. Telegrap, which are law and air runes. Alchemy runes, which are nature and fire. Snare, which are nature, water and earth, and weekend, which are body runes, water and earth. For the rest of the inventory, one stamina potion, one prayer potion, and a full inventory of good food. For teleport, one teleport to the Black Knight's castle, and about maybe three teleports to Faldor castle, and one teleport to go back to any bank to prepare 
Expo Part 4. Once we are ready, let's make our way back to the Black Knight's Fortress. We no longer need the Bronze Medium Helm nor the Iron Chain Body, because the Dark Squall is even more elite than the Elite Dark Knights. Once we're back in the base, let's run north to the broken bridge and then use the shortcut south of the bridge to go all the way to the other side of the cave system and go through the northern door. And go to the northeastern corner, there you'll find a ladder. Climb up. And by clicking to continue three times, the boss fight will start after a cutscene. Use Protect from Magic at all times. Also, stay away from Surak as far as possible. Keep your Magic Spellbook open at all times. Once you see a special attack, then you're able to react to what it is. What might be interesting before going up the ladder and starting the boss fight is to go to your Spellbook, right-click and enable filtering, and then disable your teleport spells. Did I just fucking teleport? Are you serious? If it is a slow search spell, you will need to cast the opposite of that spell. And the combinations are air and earth and water and fire. When you see one, cast the other. Just make sure that before you're casting your opposite spell, that there isn't a pillar standing in your way. What? Two? Two? The fuck? Or, when there are multiple surges coming at you, that you don't misclick on the wrong one. Second, is that it will spawn an agile warrior that will run towards you and explode. We will need to cast Bind, Snare or Entangle to be able to defeat it. Third, is the same thing but then with a strong warrior, we will need to cast Weaken on it to be able to deal damage and defeat it. And for the fourth and the final special, the boss will throw lit explosives. Before they go off, cast Telegraph on it to put it in your inventory, and then use Alchemy on it to get rid of the bomb. Lastly, don't forget to heal from all the taken chip damage, and you should be fine.
Yes! My god! Once the fight is over, let's use the big tele orb on Surak. Or just simply talk to him. Plant the orb and let's make our way to Pelador. Let's go back to the gang and talk to any of the three NPCs. Next, let's open the cell gate and select option 1 to swap places with Surak. Once we are back in the basement hideout, let's go downstairs and go to the most western table. We haven't searched one lost table. Go search that one to find a law and a death rune. Take both. If you use a room pouch, make sure that you have your law rune outside of the room pouch. It should have been fixed, but if not, go back upstairs, go to the center of the room and activate the strange tele orb to deep wilderness. Then go northeast, climb over the icy wall to not enter the wilderness. And afterwards, we will need to jump the ledge by clicking on the tile that we're standing on to trigger a cutscene. Once the casting is over, let's make our way to any bank to prepare for part 4. Once again, I'm going to Ferris Enclave to restore all the stats. Let's go to the bank and deposit once again everything, inventory and equipment. What we will still need is the Dark Quell rope set and a Sapphire Lantern. What is recommended is to have as much inventory space as possible, up to a limit of 20. Doesn't matter if you have more than 20. Also bring some weight reducing clothing. For the teleports, two teleports to Tears of Gatex. I'm going to be using a Games Necklace. And one teleport to go to any bank to prepare for the final boss fight. And lastly, do not forget to also bring one Falador teleport. First, let's teleport to Falador and let's talk to the remaining gang from after the cutscene. Hmm. 
let's talk to any of them. And after speaking to them, they will have found the spy that they have noticed at the start of the quest. He is located at Tears of Cathex, so let's make our way there. And go north. Climb up the rocks and you'll find Moldava, the, the guy that we have uh, raided the, the base of. Let's talk to him. And after speaking to him, we will need to right click on our Sapphire Lantern and use it on any light creature that is not currently in use or attracted to someone else. Once we're in the abyss, next to us they'll find a skeleton. Search it for a spade, then southwest. Search it for some more tools, then go back northeast and use your spade on the rocks. And then click space once, no, twice. No, next is to confirm if you want to take the fire orb. Next, go west to the northwestern part. Use your spade on the rocks over there. Once again, double one. Yes. Then one to take the earth orb, then go south. Next, there will be an air brazier. Take the air orb out. Then go east. And go to the water brazier. With blue fire. Once again, yes, to take the orb out. And then go south. We no longer need our tools, we may deposit or drop them. Let's turn our camera south and you'll find three skull caves. Next to them, next to the nose cavity, they will find an element. Use the correct orb on the recessed block to get another block. Do this three times. Next one is fire and that one should be earth, the western, the right one. Next. Go upstairs next to the center cavity and do so twice and in there we will need to use the water orb. Next climb back down twice and next we will need to enter all three of the nose cavities. At the end, we'll find a mechanism with an element glowing on top of it. Simply insert the correct block and exit. And do the same with the other two cavities. Once you've done that, let's climb up the wall 
twice, I guess, to go back to the bigger stone skull wall and insert the fire block or your final essence block on it. And this time the stone cube will have an inspect option to do so to open the mouth and climb through the opening to go to the herblore part of this quest. Let's go to the center until you find two green things, a green skeleton and a green brazier. Search the skeleton to find a sickle as well as six druid pouch. Then inspect the brazier to get a stamina boost. What to do first is to run into any tunnel, stand on a corner of a dead vine and then right click and cast bloom and then left click and cast bloom until they spawn some flowers. We will need three more flowers. Wow, this corner is so shit. Oh, there we go. Once we have three, right click on the druid pouch and fill. Next, go into any tunnel and I use your druid pouch on any of the druid spirits. They will drop a herb and a secondary. Do so eight times. At the end of the tunnel, there will also be an altar. If you inspect the altar, it will say what kind of herbal or potion ingredients you will need to use on it to receive its dolmen. Once you've reached the end of the first tunnel at the altar, just quick hop to go back to the center. And let's release some more druids for herbal supplies. The potions that you have to make and on which altar you have to place them are random for everyone. Simply go to every end of a tunnel, use the herbal or potion ingredients on the altar, take the dolmen, quick hop, and go to another tunnel. Once the stamina boost has run out, inspect the green brazier again to get some more energy. Do this until you have eight dolmens. If you don't know what kind of ingredients are required for the potion in need, you can always check your herbal guide. The locations of the altars are northeast, east, southeast, South Southeast, and even though all the altars should be random, the South Southeastern altar is always the Gothic's balance potion from the In Aid of the Marquis quest, which isn't even a requirement. And then there's also four altars on the western side Northwest, West, Southwest, and South Southwest.
Okay, the south southwestern one is also really far away. Use your final two ingredients on it to get your eighth dolmen. I am not running back. I'm simply gonna quickly hop worlds. And let's make our way back to the center. Just south of the green stem Nabrasia, there will be a small stone circle table. Inspect it. Say yes to place all the eight dolmens at once. Once we have unlocked the second and the final boss room at the southern part, let's make our way to the bank to prepare. For the final boss fight, let's deposit everything once again, the inventory and the equipment. What we will still need is the sapphire lantern, as well as all three combat styles. The boss is weakest to heavy ranged ammo, so for ranged I'm going to be using bolts. The boss is also weakest to crush, so I'm going to be using a mace or an anchor or a bludgeon as a melee weapon. And magic, it doesn't really matter what kind of magic you use, so I'm going to be using a trident of the swamp. And lastly is also four super restore potions. You could defeat the boss by taking absolutely zero damage, but therefore you will need to be able to prayer flick perfectly at all times. If the boss happens to attack you while you are off prayer, it can deal up to 89 damage. And the amount of damage that it has dealt you also gets removed from your prayer points and all your other stats. So before we go, let's drink a Cerebrew and Super Restore. To gain some extra HP and defense levels, then a magic potion, a range potion, attack potion, and strength potion. And the rest of the inventory should be some good food. If you think you are ready, let's make our way back to Tears of Gothics. Make sure that you bring your Sapphire Amulet. Make our way back to uh, Moldova. And uh, let's use our Sapphire Lantern on any of the nearby light creatures. Oh, there's a left-click option now. Easy game. Select option 2 to go back into the Abyss. Let's make our way back to the Herblore part of this quest and go to the boss room south of it. Once you're in the Gothic's temple, let's inspect the brazier, get 100% energy, and let's run south. Keep running south until a cutscene starts. After the cutscene, the boss will immediately attack with ranged.
Now, I suggest since the boss is pretty weak to ranged to deal most damage using ranged and maybe ruby bolt specs. Up until today, the boss is still attacking with ranged. If it is orange, light blue, then it is magic. If the boss is white, then it attacks you with melee. Pray accordingly. That is your number one priority and the most important thing to do. If it is orange, pray ranged. If it is light blue, pray magic. If it is white, pray melee. Secondly, you can attack back and try to defeat the boss. First pray, then heal, drink a potion or attack back. If you need some more time, you could use the Stone of Jazz as a safe spot. The final 150%. Ah, shit. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. Fuck. Use the anchor as a final attack! Has this boss made easier? Max hit has been doubled to like 80. Damn! The Stone of Jazz safe spot really saved my ass, I think. And probably also tick eating. I... This was not good. Lol. Once you have defeated the Balanced Guardian, just touch the Stone of Jazz to start the second battle phase. Not really. We simply need to defeat two 
Tormented Demons while our stats are boosted all the way to level 255. So their shield protecting them doesn't really work at all anymore. So we can simply use any style of our liking. After the cutscene is over. And the Tormented Demons also have three attack styles. If you're standing close, it might use melee. If it fires a yellowish cone at you, it is ranged, use protect from range. If it is a fire flame coming at you, then use protect from magic. I suggest to simply not stand in melee range and use magic or ranged. When you are binded by the Tormented Demon, click away and stand on another tile that is not darkened by a shadow. I have no idea when they change combat styles. It's not when they change prayer though. What the shit? Am I dying to a tormented demon? Are you serious? Okay, you guys should fucking do the rest, dude. Venom the rest, fuck off. Go, Venom, go. Hello. Venom. Yes. Not Venom, though. Once the two tormented demons are defeated, let's talk to Idria. And select option 1 to teleport to Falador. Let's talk to her again or any of the other characters to complete your quest. And if you already have completed the quest Dragon Player 2, you will get an additional cutscene. And congratulations, you've completed While Gothic Sleeps. You are awarded with 5 quest points, 50,000 Hunter experience, 75,000 Herblore and Farming experience, and 80,000 Thieving experience. You now also have access to Tormented Demons inside of the Gothic Temple where we did the Herblore part of this quest, ability to upgrade your Arc Light to an Ember Light, as well as the ability to craft a Demon Bane Bow and Staff. Finally, you can also talk to the replacement of Duradel, selecting option 4 and 2 to get Slayer XP, which equals to 15 times your Slayer level.
this was my guide how to complete Wild Catholic Sleeps Quest. Hopefully it has helped. Subscribe, rate, and comment. Okay, thanks, bye.